When seeing Revit LT for the first time, many new users are immediately impressed by its 3D capabilities, but quickly begin to wonder how well it fares on two-dimensional drawings such as details. You will be pleased to learn that in addition to its powerful suite of 3D tools, Revit LT sports a complete complement of 2D tools and features as well. Let's start with a simple two-dimensional detail. On the View tab, I'll create a new drafting view. I give it a name and a scale, and then it opens a blank sheet of paper that I can begin drawing my detail. On the Annotate tab, we have a 2D detail component tool. Here I can click the Load Family button and browse in the default library to the Detail Items folder. It's organized in Master Spec Divisions, and I can browse through the various subfolders and locate the Gypsum Wall Board component in section. This component is similar to other families in Revit. It has multiple types, so I can choose the size that I want on the type selector and click a few points on screen to indicate the length of drywall that I'm interested in. You can draw a second piece right next to the first and use the temporary dimensions to fine tune placement. To save some time, I've preloaded the rest of the families that we'll need for this simple detail and I can access them using the component tool from the type selector. Many of the components are parametric and you can manipulate them either with grips on screen or using the values on the properties palette. In addition to the large selection of pre-built detail item families, we can also simply draft line work as required. Using the detail line tool and the drop down of predefined line types, I can add lines to represent any variety of entities, such as the ceiling plane in this case. We also have some special case tools like bat insulation. You can give it a size here on the options bar and then simply click to place a few points. Detail items have stacking order and to adjust that stacking order is as simple as selecting an item and using the arrange tools on the ribbon to decide which one comes to the front. Continue the process to add other drafted entities and adding text is a simple matter as well. You can add it with or without leaders. You click the point where you would like the leader to go and then simply type the note. This is a simple example of a typical detail. But if it was truly a typical detail, you'd likely already have it drawn in another project. Revit LT makes it simple for us to share details among various projects. On the Insert tab, I can use the Insert from File command, and I want to insert views from an existing project. I simply browse to the project that I want to use, open it up, and select one or more drafting views from that project. When I click OK and after a confirmation dialog, Revit LT will import the drafting view that I selected. This process makes it easy to reuse your existing details in current projects. Well, what about those details you've accumulated in AutoCAD over the years? Revit LT can just as easily import those CAD details as well. Let's start with a new drafting view. Give it a name and scale. On the Insert tab, we can click Link CAD, select a detail, and bring it in. This is a simple storefront detail downloaded from Autodesk Seek but the results may not be completely what we expected. So I'm going to delete the file and bring it in again and change a few of the settings. The first thing I might want to address is the line weights. Here on the import panel, I can click this small icon to adjust the import line weights. Revit LT can look at the colors in the layers of the CAD file and assign them to predefined line weights as the files being imported. In this way, you can make it match your company standards. So I simply input the desired line weights next to each of the color numbers, click OK, and this time when I link the CAD file, it will use those line weights. Furthermore, I can change the color designation to bring it in all in black and white, and I can make sure that I'm bringing it in in the correct units, so I'm going to choose millimeters here. And when I open it up, this time you can see that the results are quite different. Detail has come in showing line weights, and it's all in black line work. In the examples we've looked at so far, the details have been largely typical details and completely separate from the model. However, one of the most powerful features of Revit LT is how all of the views are live and coordinated with one another. This is most often seen in plans, sections, and elevations, but details can be created from the live 3D model as well. The goal is not to create every part of the model in 3D, but rather to use as much of the 3D model in composing the detail as is possible and practical. Let's go back to a section view and zoom in on the cabinetry in the kitchen area. If I go to the view tab, I can create a new callout view around this base cabinet right here. When I open that view and I can adjust the scale, 
you can see that it gives me a pretty decent starting point for my detail but there's still some work to be done. Rather than try and add all the required additional detail as 3D elements, we'll simply layer them directly on top using 2D detail items similar to the approach we took above. In this way, we complete the drawing we need, but keep the file size and performance in check. So using the same techniques, we can browse to and load additional detail components as required. We can mirror and move the component as required by the detail. And then because this is a fully parametric two-dimensional detail item, you can see that we can very quickly use these grips here to adjust its size to match the actual 3D model that we're building it on. Using additional components such as filled regions, we can begin laying out the remainder of this detail by drafting the elements we need directly on top. And the final result might look something like this. There are a few distinct advantages to creating such hybrid details. First, you leverage as much of the model as practical so that you don't waste time redrawing. Next, your detail will be more accurate since it's being drawn directly on top of a live model. If the underlying model changes, you'll be able to react to those changes directly in the detail and in some cases the 2D elements will even stay attached to the underlying 3D geometry and update themselves. And finally, callouts can be placed directly on sheets and all annotation and tags are fully coordinated.